And so when we think about a project manager, what we're actually thinking about is this person who's the central point of not only transferring, you know, information and you're not just like, you know, a glorified messenger, right? You are the person who is, uh, you know, in charge of planning the project, scheduling it, making sure that everything gets done on time and on budget, right? So it seems like it's a lot of responsibility. And I know that in our previous uh, classes, we've given you all of this information um, about composition, about typesetting, about all of this uh, stuff that we do. Uh, but a project manager doesn't necessarily have to do everything, right? A pro you don't have to be a one person team unless you want to be, right? If you feel comfortable enough to, um, you know, to be that one person team, Hey, you know, by all means, take it on, right? Uh, but a, a project manager is essentially in charge of receiving these uh, manuscripts from your authors, looking them over what we call vetting, right? And then planning out how the project is going to go. Because oftentimes, for example, here at Scribe, a standard book will take around four months, right? And so the project manager is the first person to see those manuscripts uh, that come in, and then they have to go ahead and plan ahead, coordinate with the team here, coordinate with freelancers if they need to be brought in, and things like that. Um, so what what we're going to be talking about um, today, and it's not going to be as sort of formal as we've uh, done the other classes where it's sort of like there's a procedure or anything like that. We do have procedures for everything that a project manager does, but we want to hear not only your feedback, but we want you um, to sort of like take in some of what we are, we're teaching. So a project manager, if we can think of it in simpler terms, is a person who is, um, who is responsible for getting the project done on time and on budget. Right, and then everything else that sort of um, fits into there. Um, one of the big issues that comes up as a project manager um, is author management and author communication. Um, when you're dealing with an author, you have to not only keep their expectations in check, but you also have to, you know, not necessarily bow down to them, but you know, you have to, you know understand that you're working with them. You're not like this process, although sometimes we've made it seem a little bit more adversarial than it needs to be, right? Um, you know, shouldn't be adversarial. You're trying to bring in your author's content and produce something that's going to help, um, you know, not only the students, but everybody else who's going to use your textbooks. Like, for example, that's sort of our our mission as, you know, um, as part of the OTN to help this content be open and freely available uh, to whoever needs it, right? Um, so when you're thinking about author management, we've provided templates, and we'll discuss those in a bit. Uh, we've provided templates to sort of that you can take and, you know, reword as you need as you need to, uh, but it essentially says, um, you know, all the information that you need. Um, so what we'll do um, now is we'll start just going into like sort of a little bit of granular detail of, um, of what a, um, a project manager does. So let's go like, let's take the big picture and say, okay, you know, project manager is in charge of making sure that everything is done on time and correctly and so on and so forth. But the project manager is also the first person to receive the manuscript and receive whatever files the author has sent. And so we are also in charge um, as project managers of organizing files. So I'll go ahead and send you another link here for you to follow along. And in that link, you'll see that we've sort of described how you should um, name your files, how you should um, organize them. Again, these are guidelines. These are not us sort of forcing our uh, methodology uh, upon you. Uh, you are welcome to organize things as best as you see fit. But the important thing to take away from this is that things must be organized. Um, when we are working, for example, when we're working here at Scribe with a manuscript, we're not just working with a manuscript. We're working with images. Uh, we're working eventually with design templates, uh, with typeset files. Um, sometimes we'll have an index come in after the fact because, you know, you needed to have the file typeset before you could index it. Um, you'll have multiple files, multiple images, um, you know, and, and whatever else may be needed like for example for the ebook fonts and so on all floating around at the same time and you don't want um you don't want to have that scattered all over your like your desktop you know and have it look like a minefield of files what you want is to have everything nicely organized right and so uh for our file naming what we use is we use the client code um and then the project name. So for example for something like OTN we'll say OTN is the uh the client code 
and the uh, project name is often either the author's last name or something like Economics 101 or something like that. Um, and then everything, every file related to that project will have that file name with something appended towards the end indicating what that file might be. So for example, if you have, you know, OTN Smith, right? You have OTN Smith and then you have your source file, you can call that OTN Smith source or whatever it might be. And then if you have your compose file, then you can call it OTN Smith compose and so on and so forth. That way you always have not only a working backup, but you also have um, a, you leave alone, you know, the previous stage that has been like checked and perfected just in case something goes horribly wrong and you can, you, you can always go back uh, to your files. Does that make sense to everyone? Um, do we have any questions at this point for file naming or organizational purposes. I'll wait a moment. Okay. So underneath, oh, there we go. So yes, yeah, so sharing files between people, uh, Tim actually brought this up in our, in our previous class. Um, what we do here at Scribe is that everybody has the same uh, folder structure. We use Google Drive in order to share files between offices. Um, as some of you may know, uh, Tim is in Philly. I'm down here in Florida, and we work together on um, on several projects. And so, you know, we have to transmit files, and so we'll use uh, Google Drive for that. But the key to sort of keeping everything together is that Tim, on his computer, has a folder structure. Um, if not exactly the same, very similar, at least 90% similar to what um, I have on my computer. So when I send him a file, he knows, okay, I'm going to place, let's say I send him a compose file for, um, you know, for a design, right? Because Tim needs to see the compose file, see what styles we're using um, and use that file in order to create a design. So when I send that to him, he's going to place that compose file in his compose folder on his machine. And so that way there's always parity. Um, the advantage to that um, is also, let's say Tim is out because um, I think I heard it was snowing up there in Philly and some people might be out. So let's say, um, you know, he's out, he can't make it in because of the snow, but I need this file right away. Somebody can hop on his computer and know exactly, hey, OTN Smith, the composed file, uh, composed file will be in the composed folder. They don't have to go and hunt in his machine under like documents and downloads and God knows where and possibly send like a file file or something like that. Um, so ho hopefully that answered um, your question. Okay, good. I see you nodding. Um, so under organization and backup procedures in that module, there is a link um, to a Perl script that we created here at Scribe that essentially generates the folder structure that you see described in the module, right? And so you're free to download that. Um, all you have to do is you do have to have, I think, Active State Perl on your machine uh, in order to to run that. I'll provide a link for that um, during our break, which is coming up soon. Um, but um, you're able to run that, put in the name, client code, um, and project name uh, for your project, and it will generate a folder structure uh, with all of this and then all of the subfolders um, that are um, all of the subfolders that are are within uh, these main folders here. Um, so you can see our folder structure sort of has a folder for each stage, right? You have your source where you sort of drop in everything as is. Uh, within source, you have, um, you know, the compose folder and so on and so forth. We won't get into each and every one because there are many, many, many subfolders. Um, it might seem tedious at first, but when you're dealing with hundreds of files, um, and there you go, yes, uh, Tim noted that on a Mac, um, it is uh, a lot simpler. Um, than it is on PC, yeah. Mac Master Race and all that. So, um, so when we look at this, we'll see that, like I said, it seems tedious at first, but when you set things up early on, and that sort of fits into like our whole like philosophy, when you solve all the issues on the front end, you don't have any of the issues later on. If you organize your files early on, you won't have to be saying, oh no, where did I put that one image that it now needs to go into, you know, chapter one, or where did I, you know, put, you know, this equation or whatever it might be. So when we're talking about, and yes, Google Drive is secure enough as it is, as long as you're not sharing the link with, you know, uh, 
people uh, outside of your organization. Like for example, we have all of our files, um, but unless you are part of our, our organization, you can't access um, those files. Um, and if we need to share something with you, we we'll often share just what you need to, um, what you need to see so you don't see everything else. So our clients' files are um, secure. So good question, uh, because security is uh, important, but yes, Google Drive is uh, quite secure and it's a good method of transferring files. In fact, um, just sort of to bring this up again, on our Google Drive, our folder structure is also um, um, mimicked. Um, so for example, I would drop a composed file in the composed folder on Google Drive and that's where Tim will pull it from so that way there's no worries or, or anything uh, where, where there might be doubts or questions about what file you're actually using. Um, so yeah, so um, at this point, does anybody have any questions about folder organization and how, how it can help um, in this process? Again, we just sort of bring up this idea that organizing your files early on will save you a lot of headache later. Right? And there's also the advantage that if everybody's on the same page, then there's a less chance for error, less chance for somebody to use, for example, uh, an old file. Um, so Carla is saying emphatically, yes. Um, and that is true, right? Because if we've had it, we've had it happen here, which is why we do this. Like, don't think that we just came, you know, and said like, hey, we know that this is gonna work. Uh, our folder structure um, is born from that, from having run into issues where like, oh no, somebody grabbed a file file when they shouldn't have, and now we've worked, and now we have to backtrack and all this other stuff, you know. Um, it comes from experience, right? Which again, then sort of using that to segue into this, if you guys have any tips or tricks for organizing files, you know, you're more than welcome uh, to share them um, and share them with the class because it's, uh, that's the whole point. We're all learning here. I'd say this, I would say that like as project managers, this is sort of like the most important thing that we do. We keep things organized because oftentimes we are working with, you know, like for example, let's say you're working with a freelancer, that freelancer may not be buying into your organization, uh, um, your organizational skills, right? So what, you're, what you'll need to do is like, once you get files back from the freelancer, you might need to tweak them and make sure that they are placed where they need to be. So that way there's no issues um, down the line. So organization is key. And as Carla said, doing that early on and planning that out, um, you know, will save you a lot of headache uh, later down, right? So be the beast, right? Okay, so Kathy noted that there isn't a compose file in the list. And that's actually because of the way that we here at Scribe um, um, know things. So for example, if you, I just gave the top level um, structure. So if you use that standard create file folders standard script, um, you'll see that these are the folders that you'll see, but within the source folder, you'll see that there are three folders, the actual source folder, the original, the renamed and the composed. So the original is where the file uh, goes. And then you have, and I can, um, I can update this uh, folder structure tree so that you can see everything um, later on. Um, so that you'll see that and have that available. But um, you'll have the original folder, then you also have the renamed folder, which is, just takes the file that's in the um, original folder and renames it, and you drop it into the renamed folder. And then after that, you have the composed folder, which is a folder where you're actually uh, be working on. So, so OTN Smith source would be your like your source file. And the reason we place com uh, the composed folder in that is because the composition is considered a source for everything else that we're gonna do um, after that step, right? 